Hey there, Richie D back with a Q&A on the Gear VR based on the comments that you left on my previous video. So let's go through the questions. All right, so the first question was from Andrew Britton and straight to the point, how do you find the quality of the screen? Is the screen door effect very visible? And how do you find the field of view in comparison to the DK2? For those that don't know what DK2 is, that's the PC version of the Oculus platform. So there's the mobile VR and then there's the PC VR. Uh, from a quality of the screen, look, everything I'm judging here is based on everything still being in beta. That said, things like the Oculus Cinema, uh, the 360 degree photos, even a lot of the apps that I've tried have all been extremely responsive. It looks fantastic. So I can imagine when it gets truly optimized and released uh, as the true Innovator Edition in December, how good it's gonna look. It is, the execution thus far uh, is pretty mind blowing. From a screen door effect, yeah, sure, you can still see uh, those individual pixels. Now from a Note 4 perspective, we are sitting at over 500 PPI. So the question begs, what kind of pixel density do you have to be at in order not to see pixels given that the uh, smartphone is that close to your face. Uh, you know, you'd have to say that a smartphone would have to be at a thousand PPI for it not to have any visible effect. Um, so it's funny because there has been this chase and this shift uh, towards a higher PPI. And at some point we were all probably saying, look, there's no need to go any further. But now because of the emergence of mobile VR as a true category, as an accessory to a smartphone, suddenly uh, it looks like that this is going to be uh, a, a playing field that's going to be even more important as we go forward. So that's a great question. And also to the uh, field of view. Yeah, look, the field of view is slightly narrower than the DK2, but only by literally four degrees. And to be honest, the quality of the screen versus the DK2 with the increase in resolution uh, easily overcompensates uh, for that difference in field of view. You don't really notice it that much. Okay, the next question is from Sebastian Rosing. He says, what's the quality of execution? Like, is it comfortable, easily managed? How are the controls? Is it well made? So all very good questions. And I have to say, after playing with this for the last few days, yeah, it look, it is very well made. It's robust, it's sturdy, it's very easy to manage in terms of taking the uh, cover off, putting the Note 4 in, uh, it stays in there. There's no real um, shake uh, or loose components. Uh, the padding is fantastic as well. So you've got straps, uh, which allow you to fully adjust on the sides and on the top. And then you've got padding on the back, on the top, and also inside as well. So that area there, particularly the area that suits your, uh, that sits around your face. Now that is probably the biggest hygiene issue that I can see. Uh, but already there's third party supplies coming out with uh, protectors, uh, for the uh, DK2 PC version. So you can imagine this would be quite a good accessory to have, particularly if you're sharing this and you're worried about sweat going from your face to the Gear VR and then onto someone else's face. <laughs> uh, from a control point of view, that's a very good question too because you've got this on your face and you can't actually see uh, the controls. But when I was with Glenn yesterday at 2GB, uh, he was able to control it uh, for the very first time that he actually had it on his face. Uh, very easy to find uh, the volume, very easy to find the uh, back button as well. And because there's such a large square, um, you can even use two fingers just to do that tap if you really wanted to, just to make sure that you hit that area. Um, I don't really find an issue with it. Um, and the other control here obviously is being able to adjust the lens. Again, no real issues being able to adjust to it till it was quite clear uh, for my eyes. Okay, then we had Andy Rowley and he asked, can you view your own downloaded films and videos in the cinema app? Uh, okay, so that, let's answer that question first. Uh, yes, you can download your own videos and watch it in the Oculus Cinema. It looks fantastic. You can even record your own videos uh, using the camera and then view that in the cinema as well. And that, I've got to say, is pretty mind-blowing. You, know, you can go outside, take a uh, a shot of a birthday or something that you're doing and then sit back and watch it in your own private massive cinema. Uh, that's a pretty cool uh, experience. Uh, the next question he's got is do you need to buy Bluetooth headphones or can you plug headphones in? So you don't need to buy Bluetooth headphones but you can use them. So I've got my Jabra Pulse headphones right here. I've actually got those connected to the Note 4 
and they work, perf they work perfectly. Uh, but the other option is when you put the Note 4 into, uh, oops, into the uh, Gear VR, there is actually a space there to enable a wide headphone to be connected. So even when the cover goes on, yeah, you can still see that there's that area right there uh, for connection for a wide headphone. So it's your choice, wide or wireless. Uh, the Gear VR can actually handle both. Uh, the other question there that uh, slash 310579 also asks, is there a sync issue between the Bluetooth headphones and the videos? I didn't see any at all. I was watching a movie and it was timed and synced perfectly between the audio and video. So no issues there. And also slash 310579 also had a few other questions. For example, um, do you have to convert your videos into, for example, side-by-side -side 3D before you load them into the cinema? Uh, the answer is no, but in fact, I wasn't able to view any of my own side-by-side -side content. Uh, that, I think, had to be transcoded or encoded in a particular way to be used within the Oculus Cinema. Because if you think about it, you've already got a 3D effect going on, and then you're overlaying another 3D effect within just the cinema panel, or the cinema screen panel, while you're sitting in this immersive environment. So uh, I can imagine there'd be a fair bit of processing going on there. Another question was, is there already a way to screen capture the VR content? Now, the only way I've been able to do that so far is really just using my little uh, old Samsung uh, camera. Um, and actually that's quite good to be able to capture one lens, but there's no actual way that I could find to screen cap. Um, there is a USB out, which I'm sure could be used for things like MHL, and down the track, I'm sure that'll be either hackable or made open uh, for people to be able to uh, take video from there. Another cool question that he had was, can you use cardboard, uh, sorry, Google Cardboard apps? Now, I actually was able to do that by using the Note 4 that I hadn't loaded the Gear VR app on. However, it didn't work very well. Obviously, it's not optimized for Gear VR. You, you literally still have to do the turn to go back to home. Uh, one thing I was able to do fairly well was use the Chrome VR, so using the mobile Chrome, uh, mobile Chrome browser and use some of the Chrome experiments that uh, are on there at the moment using uh, the Gear VR. That was pretty cool. But I'd say, again, you're not within the Oculus environment. It's not optimized, so it's certainly not suggested. And it wasn't a very good experience, to be honest. It, it's not, uh, you could certainly say that it's definitely not set up for that. Uh, you definitely want to be within the Oculus uh, in ecosystem, if you like. One of the other questions he had was about overheating. Uh, how long does it take before the Note 4 asks to be cooled down or to stop the uh, Gear VR app working? I haven't got to that stage, actually. I intend to watch a full movie on the uh, Gear VR, uh, but I haven't done it yet. Uh, I intend to do that, uh, and I'll be able to give some feedback on that once I've done that. In fact, that could be its own segment about the whole experience of sitting at home watching something in a large cinema. I think that'd be pretty cool. And of course, one of the common questions was, when is it actually going to be available? So two things there. Uh, the first one is that it will probably be released sometime early December, from what I hear. But secondly, if you want to try it out right now, particularly in Australia, in Sydney and Melbourne, I know of shopping centers that have this available. In fact, I'll make sure I talk to Samsung and get those locations put onto richiesroom.com so you can have a look at them for yourself if you wanted to get out there and try it out. Now, Sebastian Schenk also asked about being able to watch videos of films downloaded or self-shot. But the other question there is how would it potentially integrate with, for example, Google Movies? Uh, would you, if you bought the movie over at Google Movies, would you be able to then transfer that into the Oculus system? Or would you have to buy it from the Oculus Store in order to watch it? Because we know the movie houses are signing up to be part of this uh, mobile VR experience and ecosystem. Can you actually take the content that you've got and be able to put that into the Oculus area. I have no idea um, at this stage. What I do know is that if you buy something uh, from Vimeo, for example, and it's an MP4, I was able to load that into the movie folder and the uh, Gear VR app and the Oculus Cinema was able to pick that up as your own videos and played it back. So that's where we are at the moment. As far as integration with other purchasing ecosystems, not sure. And lastly, Greg Lanciotti left a message on the last video talking about Sixth Sense being able to add full positional tracking abilities for the Gear VR. Now, when I saw that, I just froze. But then, of course, I went to Road to VR, which is run by my mate Ben Lang. And, yep, it's true. This company will give the ability to players and viewers 
the ability to be able to move within your environment, not just within an axis and look up and down and around, but also actually move your head within the environment and for all the objects and landscape to react accordingly. So you don't have to actually use um, a, rem a, a control mechanism to move around your environment. You'll be able to just move your head. Incredible, it blows things open even further and takes uh, the game changer level of the Gear VR to yet another step. So that's it from me. I'm going to settle in and watch a movie on the Gear VR and uh, I'll get back to you soon with those results and my thoughts about using this as a full immersive cinema environment. Until then, hit me up with any other questions you've got on uh, the Gear VR and hopefully I'll be able to answer them for you. Until next time.